Hey guys, welcome to the holiday season. When I think of the holidays, I think of big dinners with loved ones, pumpkin pie, cozy nights in, that fake log burning channel on TV, and of course, gift giving. Whichever holiday you're celebrating this season, I've got nine knitted and yarn related gift ideas for you. I'm gonna go through these gifts from the fastest and easiest to the longest and hardest. These gifts aren't gonna knit themselves, so let's get into it. It doesn't get much easier or cuter than these pens. They are so nostalgic. And in case you didn't get the memo, the 90s are back. <laughs> get on the nostalgia train and make one of these pens. For this project, you'll need some yarn, cardboard, a glue gun, and a few pretty pens. I'm gonna start off by making a pom-pom. I'll link a more detailed pom-pom tutorial in the description. In this video, we're just gonna race through the process. So I'll trace a round shape that's around two inches in diameter. Then I'll cut out that circle and trace an identical circle and cut that out too. Now I've got two circles. Then I'll draw a smaller hole in the circle and cut that out. And I'll do the same to the other circle. Now we have these two donut looking circles. I'll cut an entryway into both donuts. Now I'll grab my yarn and start wrapping it around the donut. Once it's big and chubs, I'll cut off the yarn and cut all the way around the donut so that the yarn is loose. Then I'll slip a strand of yarn between the two cardboard donuts and tie a knot to secure the whole pom-pom in place. Then I'll take off the cardboard donuts and voila, our pom-pom is free. I'll use my two tracers to help me neaten up the pom-pom so that it's nice and round. And then I'll just give my pom-pom a little haircut to make it really perfectly round. You can spend a lot of time on this and I certainly did. <laughs> Now I'll heat up my glue gun and once it's hot, I'll spread the pom-pom and put a big glob of glue right in the center. Before it dries, I'll stab my pen into the center and allow the glue to dry before letting go. And in just a few seconds, it's stuck and secure. Look at that little jiggle, so cute. This pen is perfect for writing secrets in your diary if you decide to keep one for yourself and it'll also make such a fun gift. Tasseled bookmarks speak to the child nerd in me who loved my school scholastic book fair more than any other school event of the year. Take that sports day. These bookmarks can be customized to reflect the interests, in jokes, and favorite memes of your bookworm giftee. I'm using yarn, cardboard, scissors, a hole punch, tapestry needle, lamination sheets, and an iron. I've also got some wrapping paper that I'm gonna laminate. So I'll cut out a bookmark shape from my wrapping paper and I'll make sure to fold it so that it shows on both sides. Now I'll get out my lamination pouch. This one is 80 microns. I'll slip the bookmarks inside the pouch and cut out the lamination so it covers the bookmarks and leaves a generous margin. Poured out all the water from my iron. This is important. We don't want any steam. Then I'll set my iron to its highest setting. That's usually a cotton or linen. And I'll place some cotton fabric over the lamination sheet. This is just a tea towel. Then I'll iron over the lamination. I'm going in smooth strokes. Then I'll turn it over and iron the other side. Let the bookmarks cool down on their own. Now we can trim off the lamination and we'll leave a border around the bookmarks and then punch a hole at the top of the bookmark. Now we're ready to make a tassel. I'll take out some cardboard and cut out a square that's about two and a half by two and a half inches. I've got this pretty sock weight yarn and I'll wrap it around the cardboard around 12 times. Then I'll snip off the yarn. Now I like to use sock weight because it creates a more delicate, fine tassel, but if you wanna use a worsted weight, that's fine too. It's just gonna be a different look. Now I'll cut a length of yarn that's about 10 inches and I'll slide it underneath the yarn that's looped around the cardboard. I'll tie a knot to secure it and then we'll slide the scissors underneath the yarn and cut it loose. And now you can really see the tassel taking shape. I'll cut out another 10 inch length of yarn and we'll use this to tie around the top of the tassel. I'll grab one end of the yarn and wrap it around the tassel about three times and then I'll tie a knot with the other end. Now these strands of yarn are kind of loose, they don't look very neat. So I'm gonna grab my tapestry needle and stick it right into the tassel. And I'll thread up these two yarn strands. 
and pull them right into the tassel. And this keeps them nice and neat. Now I'll trim my tassels so that it is nice and even. And I'll tie a knot that's about three inches down from the tassel, then snip the yarns close to the knot. Then I'll insert this into the hole from the wrong side of the bookmark. If you don't have a preference for the wrong or right side, then any side will do. Then I'll pull the tassel into the loop on the other side and pull it through. And now the tassel is attached to the bookmark. Hurrah! You can trim the yarn close to the knot to make it look neater. And when you look at the bookmark, the knot is sort of hidden at the back. However, if you're a very type A person like me, then seeing that knot is gonna drive you nuts. So I've got another way of attaching the tassel so it doesn't involve a visible knot. So undo the tassel from the bookmark and also undo the knot at the top of the tassel. So now the tassel is just moving freely across this strand of yarn. Now I'm going to tie another knot at the very end. Here we go, just like this. Trim off that little bit of yarn at the knot. Now I'm going to move this knot right into the base of the tassel. So we're gonna hide the knot right up here. Now you can see the knot has disappeared, it's up here. Now I'm going to tie another knot right here at the top of the tassel. So I'm going to make a knot with my finger and just loop it through. Now I'm not gonna tie this knot down. Instead, I'm gonna take my tapestry needle, insert it into the loop, and now I'm going to pull down and I'm kind of guiding that knot to be as close as possible to the top of the tassel. And that's what my tapestry needle is doing. I'm kind of pulling it down towards the top of the tassel. I will just pull off the tapestry needle and tighten up that knot. And that knot is now hidden at the top of the tassel. No knot down here. It is beautiful. I love this. Now I can loop the tassel onto the bookmark like earlier. And now it's knotless and absolutely perfect. Heavy is the head who wears the crown. But not these crowns. <laughs> these crowns are all joy and fun and no heavy royal responsibility. I love these crowns for kids, but they're also really fun for adults. If you do like game nights, you could have red crowns versus blue crowns, for instance. In general, these crowns just add a lot of fun and whimsy to any kind of event. And fun and whimsy, it's like we need more of that in our life, you know? I've got a separate tutorial video on how to make these crowns. It's linked in the description. If I included the whole tutorial, this video would be over an hour long. So this is the Cliff Notes version. So we'll use some worsted yarn and cast on nine stitches, and then we'll increase with KFBs until we have 19 stitches. This creates one half of the crown point. Then we'll decrease the stitches with a knit two together back down to nine stitches. This creates a full point. We'll knit this repeat a total of seven times so that we have seven points to our crown. Then we'll do a regular cast off and steam the points so that they lay nice and flat. Then we'll get out our tapestry needle and seam the crown together. Et voila, the crown is complete and ready to be worn. The full tutorial is linked in the description. Elf on a Shelf was a thing, but what about gnomes? These little bearded dudes make great ornaments and they can be customized to resemble any bearded icon in your life. I've got a separate tutorial video on how to make these gnomes. It's linked in the description. The short version is that we'll cut out a one inch section from a toilet paper roll. Then we'll wrap our yarn 45 times around a book. Cut the yarn loose so that we have a bunch of yarn strands. Then we'll wrap the yarn all around the paper roll to make the gnome's hat. We'll tie the loose strands of yarn together and trim the top. And this makes the pom-pom of the hat. Then we'll wrap some beige yarn around the book to make the beard. Then we'll tie the center of the yarn so we have kind of a bow tie looking band of yarn. And then we'll cut the yarn loose on both ends. Dab some glue onto the beard and attach it to the hat. More glue onto the wooden bead and then boop it onto the beard. Give the beard a trim and the gnome is complete. Again, the full tutorial is linked in the description. This is just a short overview.
And finally, we come to the headband. So cozy, so practical, so good on a bad hair day. The headband is the quintessential quick knit. I'll show you how to make my favorite fisherman's rib twisted headband. It's a goodie. I've got a separate tutorial video on how to make this headband. It's linked in the description. This is just the Cliff Notes version. So this is the Fisherman's Rib version of the twisted headband. I'm using Madeline Tosh Tosh Vintage in the color Dust Weaver and five millimeter needles. I've cast on 17 stitches. When knitting Fisherman's Rib, cast on an odd number of stitches. I'll start by purling the first row, then row one is knit one, then purl one, then we'll knit into the stitch below. And this is the unique thing about Fisherman's Rib, the knitting into the stitch below. Instead of knitting into the next stitch as you normally do, we'll knit into the stitch directly below it. So we'll stab the needle right into the stitch underneath our active stitch and then pull out a stitch from it. And that's all there is to knitting into the stitch below. We'll repeat this, that's row one. Row two is almost the exact same. We'll purl one, then knit into the stitch below. Once again, I'll knit into the stitch directly below my active stitch. So not the stitch on the needle, but the one directly below it. Then we'll repeat that. Purl one, knit into the stitch below, purl one, knit into the stitch below to the end of the row. And that's all there is to Fisherman's Rib. We'll repeat rows one to two until the headband is the length that you want for your head. Do a little wrap test to ensure that the headband is snug across your forehead. Then do a regular cast off. And then the fun starts. We'll fold the two ends of the headband in half and then move them closer together as if they're gonna hug. Just hug it out, man. Okay, there we go. Then we'll hold that hug in place and seam it together. Then turn the headband out and now, like magic, the beautiful twist appears. Weave in the ends and the headband is complete. Again, the full step-by-step -step tutorial is linked in the description. This is just a short overview. This gift is great for housewarmings and for people who love to cook. It's also a good opportunity to use up extra chunky or extra bulky yarn that you have hanging around. I've got a separate detailed tutorial video on how to make this pot holder. It's linked in the description. The short version is that we'll cast on three stitches with chunky yarn and knit a very long I cord, roughly 68 inches. Then we'll decrease the two stitches so that the I cord tapers off a bit and then cast off. We'll weave in the ends and then we'll start coiling the eye cord and stitching it in place with sewing thread. We'll continue coiling and stitching. This process takes a while, but it's kind of meditative and relaxing. You can put on a podcast and just chill out. When we reach the end of the eye cord, we'll stitch the end in place. You can add an optional leather tab to hide the tail end of the eye cord. Stitch out around the eye cord and voila, the pot holder is complete. Again, the full tutorial is linked in the description. This is just a short overview. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the scowl is so delightful. A cowl is like the perfect hug for your neck. It just feels so good on a cold and windy day. This cowl is knit in bulky yarn, so it comes together in no time at all. And the crossover rib is just like plump and juicy with texture. It's so good. Oh, it just makes me want to sing. <laughs> I've got a separate detailed tutorial video on how to make this crossover cowl it's linked in the description. The short version is that we'll cast on 63 stitches on a 16 inch 10 millimeter circular needle and join in the round. Then we'll knit two together through the back loop. And instead of dropping the stitch off the left needle, we'll knit into one of the stitches again through the back loop, and then we'll drop it off the needle. Then we'll purl one. This is the repeat for round one. For round two, we'll slip one as if to purl, then knit one and purl one. That's it, that's the repeat for round two. We'll continue working round one and round two until the cowl is seven and a half inches. Then we'll do a basic cast off, weave in ends, and the cowl is complete and ready to be gifted. The full tutorial is linked in the description. This is just a short overview to give you a taste of how to knit this cowl.
these cozies are both decorative and economical. You can use empty glass jars and tea lights for the candle and leftover yarn to knit up the cozy. With these long and dark winter nights, a pretty candle is the perfect gift. I've got a separate detailed tutorial video on how to make this candle cozy. It's linked in the description. The Cliff Notes version is that we'll start with a glass jar that's around 2.75 inches in diameter and some worsted weight yarn. The size of your jar isn't really that important. You can always adjust the pattern. So we'll cast on 40 stitches with double pointed needles and join in the round. We'll knit half an inch of two by two rib, then we'll increase two stitches to 42 stitches. This is because the eyelet rib that makes up the body of the cozy needs a multiple of six stitches in order for it to work. Then we'll move on to the eyelet rib, which is a four round repeat. Rounds one to three are exactly the same and they are purl one, knit five, repeat to the end of the round. That's it. We'll do three rounds of this. Then comes the fourth round where things get interesting. We'll do a purl one, slip slip knit, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, and knit two together. These four rounds make up the eyelet rib and we'll repeat them until the cozy, when it's worn on the jar, touches the base of the jar. Then we'll knit in two by two rib again until the cozy covers the entire bottom of the jar, at which point we'll knit two together across the whole round and then do another round of knit two togethers to further decrease the stitches. Then we'll cut the yarn, weave it through the remaining stitches, weave in the ends, drop a candle into the jar, and voila, the cozy is complete. And again, the full tutorial is linked in the description. Slippers are the toastiest, coziest things to wear around the house. I mean, you'll never hear someone say, cozy slippers? Yeah, I'm not into that. In the winter, a pair of wool slippers? Yes, please immediately, thank you. I've got a separate detailed tutorial video on how to make these awesome slippers. It's linked in the description. For this video, we'll just do a quick overview. I'm using chunky yarn and six millimeter needles. This is so we get a tight, dense fabric that won't wear out quickly. First, we'll knit a triangle. This makes up the back heel of the slipper. Then we'll cast on stitches on either side of the triangle so we end up with what looks like an ovary. <laughs> Sorry if that's a bit graphic, but that is just literally what this looks like. Then we'll continue knitting until the piece is two inches less than the total length of your foot or whoever's foot you're knitting the slipper for. Now we'll work some decreases, gradually decreasing until we have six stitches. We'll snip a long length of yarn and weave it through the remaining stitches. This yarn is what we're gonna use to seam the front of the slipper together. Then we'll secure the yarn and part one of seaming is complete. Then we'll turn the slipper to the back and seam one side to the triangle heel flap and then seam the other side to the other flap. Weave in the ends and the slipper is almost complete. I'll take out my crochet hook and work a single crochet edge around the opening of the slipper. This is optional, but I think it gives the slipper a really finished look. The slipper is practically, but not quite yet complete. Last touch is the pom-pom. We'll make one using some cardboard and scissors and through some movie magic, it is complete right here. We'll attach it to the top of the slipper. Et voila, one slipper is complete. You'll now repeat the whole process all over again to make the second slipper. And now the slippers are well and truly complete. The full tutorial is linked in the description. This is just a short overview. And that wraps up my quick and easy gift ideas. Why am I voguing? <laughs> I don't know. I hope you're inspired to make your own personalized gifts for your loved ones. To me, it means so much more when someone uses their time and energy and their own hands to make me a gift versus just like buying something off the shelf. That's also nice too, but I think handmade gifts are just they're just in a league of their own. They're just very special. Okay, so before I get too mushy, please tag me on Instagram if you do happen to make any of these gifts. I'm Davina from sheepandstitch.com. Thanks for watching. Happy knitting, happy gifting, and have a beautiful holiday season. Bye!